السلام علیکم خواتین و حضرات وسیم حسن ویلکمس یو ٹو لیکچر نمبر فورٹی ون آف برانڈ مینجمنٹ ایم کے ٹی سکس ٹو فور ایٹ دا ورچوئل یونیورسٹی آف پاکستان ٹوڈیز ٹاپک از برانڈ بیسڈ کلچر دا میننگ ڈیولپنگ این آرگنائزیشن وچ از فلی کمپیٹیبل ود دا اسٹریٹجیز دیٹ یو وانٹ ٹو ہیو ان پلیس فار ڈیولپنگ این لیورجنگ یور برانڈ I did give you a very brief uh, introduction to the topic in my previous lecture and uh, you will recall that uh, the discussion is going to revolve around the importance of involvement of all uh, within the organization. A brand-based uh, organization is not really different from uh, the traditional organization by way of uh, the human resource and uh, the other resources. What we are going to talk about today is the culture that we need to develop in order to be able to go through all the successive phases of um, the branding process, the meaning the strategic process, and uh, leverage of a brand. Unless could we have uh, a compatible organization which is fully geared toward achieving the objectives, we cannot really go for those. So in other words, could we are talking about an organization which is very customer centric and uh, which really involves all its people toward the, the branding process. Despite the fact that uh, the branding remains the domain of the marketing people. This um, the organization or uh, this culture which is very brand based is uh, basically driven toward uh, creating is set up in which you like to go for the cross-functional relationships and interactions in order to have uh, the maximum utilization of the human resource and the talent toward making your brand a success. In order to do all this, there has to be a method which can ensure that uh, a cross-functional setup becomes a success and uh, a method whereby we can make a cross-functional activity or the set of activities a well-structured management process. That is what this kind of culture is all about. While the thrust seemingly is toward creating a mechanism of the joint working and relationships, there has to be a lot of emphasis on conviction and uh, on the ownership uh, of the concept on part of all the individuals who are involved within this kind of uh, organization or who are going to be part of the overall culture. In other words, unless there is a very strong conviction on uh, the part of all those uh, who are going to be working for the company to achieve company objectives, Uh, there is just no way that uh, the cross-functional uh, working and cross-functional interaction can be a great success. The culture that I'm talking about and uh, the organization or the organizational setup that I'm talking about is the very beneficial in relation to the brand management or the, the brand management strategies. The kinds of uh, the benefits this setup offers Okay, that could be with a summed up like uh, the following. First of all, it really throws a lot of light on uh, the, all the relationships that uh, the people have okay, with each other and uh, the significance of uh, the, those relationships as uh, the, those are viewed from a very strategic standpoint. And uh, the strategic standpoint uh, relates results okay, which you are out to achieve and you okay, must achieve as a bigger company team. So in other words, it really lets you look at yourself or yourselves as part of an overall scheme of things in which the relationships are very explicitly developed and defined and then executed. That's the beauty of this kind of a setup. Another thing which uh, that this setup um, really that does to you in a very good way is the, the measurement of uh, the brand's performance. 
And that is something which uh, we just talked about uh, in the previous lecture. Hoping that uh, you still have uh, all those points uh, very fresh in your mind. Uh, let me recall uh, your attention toward uh, all those uh, major and dominant points uh, which I talked about. And uh, you will realize uh, how important it is to have this kind of a setup. Uh, the measurement of uh, the brand's performance uh, cannot be uh, given a uh, practical shape in terms of um, the corrections and in terms of uh, the adjustments uh, and also in terms of uh, the improvements uh, even if you don't really have to make any adjustments unless uh, you really have people uh, who are like-minded and uh, who are also uh, into the same mode of thinking and the same mode of action. How is it possible that you really can have to bring about a change unless that person is fully in the picture and unless you know, that person is fully involved into a certain process which is well structured, which is well defined and in which everyone knows the significance of the relationship and the significance of the execution and given the fact of execution, the objectives which he or she is supposed to be achieving. So, performance measurement becomes easy and straightforward. This is the beauty of um, this kind of an organization. It also offers us uh, the benefit of uh, looking at uh, the customer, the product, and the brand as uh, the things which just cannot be separated. And therefore, uh, all involved within the organization could have the same focus. And uh, when the focus is uniformed, uh, there's no way that uh, the different people uh, working for uh, the same objective uh, will work differently. I mean, they will work in such a way that uh, their efforts converge at the point of achievement. It makes uh, the statement about uh, the commitment of uh, the top management because uh, without the support of the top management, this uh, the kind of uh, the culture just cannot uh, nourish itself. So in order to nurture uh, the elements of uh, this culture, it is very important that the organization really has the support of uh, the top management. Uh, the top management can support uh, this culture building in so many different ways, with which I'm going to talk about in a moment. Another benefit uh, is um, that uh, we become part of a the process which is uh, improving itself all the time and a process where uh, not only the plans uh, but thoughts and actions and uh, improvements and uh, the different kinds of developments are all owned collectively by all the people within the organization. So it doesn't really remain the monopoly of the marketing people, which generally is the complaint about marketing people on part of the non-marketing people, that you guys like to monopolize the philosophical thoughts and the whole marketing and branding process. So make sure that the people within the other parts of the organization are also part of the planning process and a process with which you are living with the day in, day out and in which you all can collectively own the thought process, the action process and the resultant the development process. This, what I've talked about, can really be witnessed in any organization which really has a very powerful brand. I don't want to give examples of any brand name or a company name. I leave it to your imagination. You look around and you will see there's so many different organizations operating within different categories that are having powerful brands and hence becoming powerful in the process. What happens is because of the power with which the brand enjoys, there is a sense of pride of being the part of that organization. And that certainly is uh, an organization which is compatible with branding and uh, is the one with uh, a culture which is very compatible with the, the brand management strategies. 
That is why uh, the people like you, while they get out of uh, the business schools, like to go for the companies which are very well known because those are powerful companies. And uh, those are the companies with uh, the very powerful brands. It is that pride which really attracts you toward those companies. And uh, once you become part of those companies, you become part of that culture. So in other words, it also becomes the responsibility of uh, those companies to attract people like you who are willing to mold themselves into that kind of a culture. This goes without saying that the company also has the responsibility of educating and training the people like you the ones they enter the gates. Well, that's something that we are going to talk about later. Back to the benefits of this kind of a culture. Another one is the level of motivation. When you see the people in a particular company full of motivation, that really is a reflection of uh, satisfaction. And uh, the motivation really uh, leads you to work your fullest. So motivation, when it runs across the organization, it makes sure that uh, the implementation of uh, the brand-based strategies uh, that takes place to the fullest. So that is um, a very important benefit which uh, this culture offers you. Another uh, the benefit uh, of this culture is that uh, it really binds you around the position of the brand because everybody is fully in the picture and uh, everybody that was involved during the process of uh, the creating the company's vision uh, which really led toward the brand's vision and uh, the brand's vision is the one which gave rise to the, all uh, the, the marketing strategies and therefore uh, you have everyone within the organization uh, owning that position and uh, because of that it becomes uh, very easy uh, for everyone to look at the, the marketing and the branding strategies from the same angle uh, as you do. In other words, you really can uh, deliver the, the promise of the brand and uh, the, the contract of the brand uh, the way it is intended because you have total support of your colleagues from the different departments, the people from the production side and people from the accounting and finance. Let's talk only about these two departments and you will know what I'm talking about. With that support from the, the, you know, the colleagues, and uh, the members of the overall bigger team, it becomes uh, much easier uh, for the organization to uh, work around that given position of the brand. So delivering on the promise becomes uh, a collective responsibility, so to say, of the total team. The whole focus is uh, on just one point, that whenever your customers think of satisfying their needs, they must think of the, your brand first. They should not think of anybody else's brand. And if you really succeed in uh, the creating uh, the, those kinds of customers, it means that you really have an organization which is compatible with your goals. Another uh, the beauty of the organization is that uh, it does not really require uh, the extra human resource. You work with the same people. You do not induct new people. You just define and redefine your relationships within the organization in a way that you end up working in a more cohesive manner. And you work in a manner that the achievement of goals becomes easy. There are no conflicts. And rather, there are convergences. There are no divergent points of views. That is the beauty of the organization. So, in other words, it is something which is not just about marketing, it is something which is about the total organization. Because the culture has to be developed across the different lines, we basically are talking about cross-functional interactions. And it really takes the blame off the marketing people who are, like I said earlier, blamed about monopolizing the, the marketing philosophy. 
and uh, therefore uh, you are uh, in a position to uh, go about achieving your objectives in a much more cohesive way. Which in turn means that uh, the achievement of uh, the, the brand's position and delivery of the brand promise become much less difficult, if not easy. In other words, it is about creating a culture that must support the brand's positioning and brand's promise, the two very fundamental and important strategic dimensions to your brand. To be able to deliver the promise, all processes, the functions and resources are integrated and reinforced. This is the, the crux of what I've talked about so far. And uh, these uh, resources and functions uh, they just cannot be uh, reinforced and integrated uh, unless uh, you have the support of the, the top management. Top management uh, must come into play and uh, that is uh, what we're going to talk about. Uh, the management has to believe in the power of the brand and uh, the management has to believe that uh, the, the brand has to be managed across the so many different functional boundaries. Now, this is not to say that uh, uh, management, meaning the top management uh, in most of the cases, is not aware of uh, this factor. The fact remains that uh, the top management has got to be committed that, uh, that they have to take certain actions in order to uh, bring the, the power of the brand to life. That is where the importance lies. In uh, the organizations that uh, have been successful in this kind of uh, an effort, the committees or um, the, the small uh, the groups that are responsible uh, for uh, creating this kind of culture so that you really can achieve your objectives is uh, generally headed by the, the head of the marketing uh, department. Either uh, this group or committee is headed by the, the marketing manager or uh, by the chief of the branding uh, the officer whoever you have within your organization. There are uh, the certain organizations uh, which really have uh, huge uh, portfolios and uh, in those organizations uh, you may have a uh, chief branding officer also. So depending upon uh, who really is uh, the head of the total uh, the marketing effort, they should head the group you know, which is responsible for uh, the bringing into the integration the areas relating to uh, the development, research, and um, the other uh, the strategic um, the functions that are responsible for strategy making. And of course, the, the chief executive of the company has got to take interest in uh, this kind of an effort. Without the support of uh, the chief executive, uh, there is just no way that um, this the small group but nevertheless, the very important senior the group within the company can be as successful as it should be. If we believe that uh, brand management strategies are uh, good for uh, the long-term health of the brand and uh, the company, then uh, the support to, uh, has got to be generated at uh, the topmost level. Uh, what will happen is uh, if uh, we have the support at the topmost level, it automatically will trickle down and uh, we then will have uh, a total executive support from within the organization. In order to have uh, the few with the winning um, the brand management strategies, we can talk about uh, the support that is uh, needed to be given to those strategies. That support is given in the form of uh, committees. You form certain committees comprising of people from different areas, the meaning from different functions, and they get together in order to make sure that all the strategies are taken into the very realistic light and the execution of those strategies takes place the way it is planned. Let us start talking about the possibility of the chief branding officer. Now, like I said, I'm going to talk about different possibilities which basically relate to some um, restructuring okay, within the, okay, the internal organization. Okay, you can have a chief okay, the branding officer responsible for okay, the brand strategy and its implementation. 
What this means is that okay, this person okay, should be responsible for the total performance of the brand. Now, having said that, if an organization could opts not to have a chief branding officer, the organization must have what you call the marketing manager. So without getting into the terminologies or um, the, uh, the designations, what it really boils down to is that the head of marketing has got to be responsible for the brand strategy and its implementation. In other words, which is total performance of the brand. Now, in order to make sure that uh, the performance takes place the way that it is planned and envisaged, you get into the different kinds and levels of committees and subcommittee. To begin with, the, the most important committee at the highest most level that you may have in any given organization is uh, what you may call brand management steering committee. This uh, the steering committee basically relates to the strategy making. And when I talk about strategy making, what I mean is uh, the committee basically is uh, responsible for developing all the requisite linkages which uh, have to be there in place to make sure that uh, the strategy relates to all the functional areas. Or in other words, the functional areas do end up working for the strategy which basically is a marketing strategy and uh, the linkages and the relationships are there. Knowing that uh, all the strategies the flow out of uh, the brand's vision, it becomes imperative on part of the marketing people to involve all others, the meaning from other functional areas, to give their inputs toward those linkages. And uh, it goes without saying that uh, this committee, uh, which is uh, headed by either the chief executive officer or the head of the marketing, comprises of other members at the highest level from their respective areas. Okay, the meaning you have to have the head of uh, the production or operations, the head of finance, the head of any other department that you may have within the company. And there are so many different departments. So to summarize, the committee is headed either by the chief executive or the head of the marketing, who may be the marketing manager or maybe the chief branding officer and is comprised of all other heads. With the meaning it is a very high level and powerful committee. It is basically responsible for developing all the linkages for the strategy which is already in place. And it goes without saying that the strategy making is a collective effort which starts from the marketing department because I'm talking about the, the branding strategy and uh, when it comes to this committee, it doesn't really mean that uh, the strategy making starts from there. What it means is that the strategy which already has been uh, crafted and that gets total support in terms of the interfunctional linkages from all the departments that are going to be involved toward delivering the brand's promise. And delivering brand's promise means that uh, the product that you manufacture has got to be delivered through all the means, meaning channels and then supported by communication and all that the, to your target audience. And that is how the, these linkages are going to work in relation to this committee at the highest most level. Okay, the, once you have uh, this committee in place that has done the job of uh, strategy, the making and uh, the strategy, assurance in a way, then you have the next level of committee which you may call the, the brand management director's committee. This committee is headed by the, the marketing manager or the, the head of marketing, whatever his her designation is, and is comprised of uh, the other members who are from the middle tiers to the senior tiers of the organization. Remember one thing, it is not that this committee is again headed by the, the marketing manager who also heads the steering committee. The steering committee is basically headed by the chief executive and uh, if the chief executive opts out of it in terms of uh, the presiding the meetings and all that, he can appoint to uh, somebody else who generally is the marketing manager or the chief branding officer. So back to the uh, directors, the brand management committee, it is headed by the, the head of the marketing 
and is comprised of people from middle to senior levels from different functions of the company. The basic objective of uh, this uh, committee is to make sure that uh, the brand management uh, the strategies are executed the way those were planned. So from the standpoint of execution, the committee has a very multi-functional kind of constitution because it is going to involve the responsibilities from so many different areas. It has to be very multi-functional at the execution level, not at the strategy level. So that basically is the difference between this committee and the one I talked about earlier, meaning strategy and then down to the execution level. After this committee, you may have another committee, or rather you should have another committee at a further level below. And that is what you may call the brand management team or brand management teams. These teams are basically headed by the brand manager and are comprised of the members who are holding equal or similar positions within various functional areas of the company. Headed by the brand manager, like I said earlier, the, the basic function of this committee is to make sure that uh, the designated objectives are divided and subdivided at the lowest possible level in order to ensure their execution. Because of uh, the level the committee or the team the works at, most of the meetings which the company is going to witness are going to be the meetings relating such teams. And uh, in relation to the execution, all I can say is that uh, the team which you're going to have under one set of circumstances they may not be the team for another set of circumstances. That is why I talked about brand management team or teams meaning that uh, you are going to change this team in relation to the needs which keep emerging regarding the execution process. Having talked about uh, the different uh, the kinds of uh, the structures within the organization, or rather restructuring of the internal resources spread across the different functions of the company, you are going to come up with uh, these committees and subcommittees based on your needs. That is what it boils down to. This is not to say that every company must have a steering committee and then a committee below that by the name of the brand management directors committee and then the brand management teams. This is just to give you an idea the way a cross-functional setup should work and the way a cross-functional setup should bring all its human resource into a well-structured and the well spelt out form of relationships which are the optimal relationships to deliver your the brand management strategies with the final objective in mind that your brand must be leveraged and your brand must gain a lot of power because that gives the brand value and that translates into the profitability. That is the crux of the matter. So to further elucidate the point, I can say that the basic effort is toward developing relationships that have authenticity and legitimacy in a very well-structured form. It is that well-structured form which really lets your brand management strategies drive themselves and in the process offer your brand a lot of strength and power. All good companies uh, depend on uh, the cross-functional uh, workings because uh, it is because of the, the cross-functional working that uh, the people from uh, the various areas start owning the part of the, the planning and action process to the benefit of the overall company. It is uh, because of the links these members of uh, the different committees have with um, their uh, the original uh, functions that uh, they are in a better position to train and educate their people back there. By educating their people, they are in a better position to uh, make sure that uh, all the objectives are achieved, the meaning the execution which is, uh, their people are responsible for does take place in the most befitting manner. So this is uh, 
a great uh, the benefit offered by this uh, the cross-functional approach. And uh, I can give you a couple of examples of how uh, this really works. Uh, just look at the, the operational people coming up with uh, an idea uh, which uh, might change the marketing strategy somewhere along the line. And uh, the marketing people getting convinced that uh, whatever operational people are talking about it makes a lot of sense. And uh, had it uh, not taken that into account, the, you know, the problems that would have emerged. So this is the one example. The other example is uh, if you have uh, the cross-functional teams and uh, the people really own uh, all the, uh, the planning and uh, the action processes, then uh, somebody from the accounting and finance may point out something to the benefit of the, the pricing strategy. And uh, you may bring about uh, the certain improvements Another example I've given you uh, in relation to the cross-functional working. So my point is that uh, when you involve people from different functions and they look upon themselves as uh, the very active members of those committees that are steering the strategy and its execution, then they assume this, this responsibility to educate and train their people so that they really can execute the way it is desired. As for uh, new recruits uh, who uh, just joined the companies, uh, I have a few words to talk about. It is uh, very important for the companies to go for those people uh, who have a broad outlook. Now, this is not to say that uh, the people should not really have uh, the specialization in one particular area. Take your own example. If you are uh, wanting to join a company uh, as a brand manager, well, you've got to be a specialist in uh, the area of marketing. But then what is important is that you must have a mindset and you must have a willingness to really educate yourself in relation to uh, brand-based cross-functional relationships. If you really are going to lock yourself up into the brand management area only, then the chances are you may not be as successful as another person who is willing to learn and really improve himself about the cross-functional relationships and all those touch points which have the potential to improve the brand management strategies. And therefore, no matter however someone bright is, unless that person has a the versatile kind of approach toward uh, the management of the issues, or for that matter, the brand management issues, uh, there is no way that uh, that person can be very highly successful. So the emphasis in on the being the versatile while still the being a specialist in your own area, which is brand management. Now, the next step that uh, I really want to talk about is you have the strategy in place. You also have the committees uh, formed for execution. Now, what is important as a next step is that you've got to communicate all that is decided in those meetings of the committees to all the people involved within the organization. Without communication, you just cannot educate your people all across the company. And without education, there is just no way that uh, you really can achieve your objectives. It remains something very far-fetched. So the ultimate objective of uh, the brand-based education, so to say, is to make sure that uh, the people all across the, the company really share the brand's vision, they really can uphold the, the brand's picture, and they really can own the brand's positioning. Because when that happens, it means that everybody within the company is on the same wavelength and you shouldn't really have any problems toward execution of uh, all the strategies that you have put in place. There are a variety of approaches which are employed by the companies under different circumstances toward educating their personnel. Some of the approaches which are popular nowadays can be talked about here. The one is that um, you have uh, the internal groups are focusing on the education through lectures. 
you have uh, the somebody from uh, the one of the functions uh, they're talking about the importance of uh, the cross-functional relationship uh, it could be the head of marketing it could be the, any other head of uh, the, any area from within the company it could be the company the publications you go for uh, those publications the say the once a month and uh, through those uh, newsletters or uh, the, whatever you may call those you educate your people about the objectives which are to be achieved you can also get to talk about uh, the decisions the company has uh, taken and um, the involvement of uh, the various people uh, from different functions uh, who took those decisions uh, in the hope that uh, the people from uh, those the very functions could will start owning uh, those decisions and then educate themselves through the, the material that you communicate. You also can uh, get into uh, some programs uh, in which you invite speakers uh, from the, uh, the outside world, uh, the meaning professionals uh, who really uh, specialize uh, in one area or the other, and um, identifying that uh, you need to have uh, somebody talk on uh, a certain uh, issue, you can accordingly make uh, a decision to invite the, the best suited person for that issue. You can also have um, interactive training modules in which uh, the knowledge is uh, the imparted to all involved uh, within the organization regarding uh, the differentiation and uh, the segmentation, uh, the positioning, and so on and so forth. Now, this is uh, not to develop uh, so many marketing specialists with the view that uh, you have a shortage of those. No. This is uh, the, with the view that uh, the people should um, try to learn different concepts so that they can apply those concepts uh, when it comes to the application of those in the light of their own particular functions. If you are talking about differentiation in your uh, the training program and uh, you really want your people educated the, who are not from the marketing department, rather from other departments, you would like them to look into those aspects in their respective functional light, which means that somebody working in the production area has got to work on that the point of differentiation. And when that person knows that this basically is the logic and the rationale behind creating and then highlighting this point of differentiation, he is going to work his heart out because he is part of the process uh, which was initiated to educate that person and to train that person. So having felt the kind of indebted to the company for the education which was imparted, this person is going to work in a very uh, motivated form. Some companies uh, go to the extent of uh, carrying out uh, the research within the organization. What they do is uh, they like to study the perceptions of their employees uh, regarding their own brands. The objective here is to uh, compare those perceptions with the perceptions of customers in the marketplace. You will recall the measurement mechanism. But while going through the market research, uh, the test of uh, customer loyalty or um, pricing or uh, anything of that sort, uh, you uh, try to identify what really were the perceptions. And uh, once you also have uh, identified the perceptions of uh, your own people within the company, you can compare those and uh, look for the gaps. And if there are any gaps, that is going to uh, pinpoint the area needing emphasis in terms of education and training. The interaction with staff under such conditions really helps the, the companies to bring their staff members really around the, the brand's positioning and to then achieve the, the brand management strategies. That's the ultimate goal and you know what it means. In order to communicate very effectively, uh, we also have uh, a few tools at our disposal just to make sure that uh, the communication really does its job. The, the first tool that we have uh, at our disposal is that uh, we let the staff know the results of our research. This may sound uh, rather uh, foreign 
So with many of you, why should uh, the marketing people share the research findings with uh, the others within the company? Because uh, generally what happens is uh, there, are, there are a lot of questions and uh, the criticism and uh, the opinion making in the, in the process. Because you are sharing something with others and uh, they feel like they're very liberated in order to give their opinions. And that is something which generally people do not like. But then that also has a positive side. And uh, the positive side is uh, when you start sharing uh, your uh, research findings with uh, your colleagues uh, all over the company, that really uh, brings them into the picture uh, what really was the basis of developing the brand's picture and uh, the brand's positioning and all the related strategies uh, for managing the brand. Now, this is something which uh, gives your colleagues a lot of confidence. In the absence of uh, why you came up with the strategies that you have come up with, the support from your colleagues uh, from different disciplines and functions uh, may not be as enthusiastic as uh, it would be if uh, you share all those facts and figures. Letting your colleagues know uh, how your brand uh, stacks up against the competition and uh, what really are the preferences on uh, the part of the customers and uh, what is it that really uh, drives their loyalty toward a certain brand and uh, what is it that uh, is going to drive their loyalty toward your brand uh, given your brand's picture throws a lot of light on uh, the basic factors uh, which uh, make them feel very confident about the creation and the existence of your brand. And this is how they assume the responsibility of uh, the making that brand a success. And that is how they contribute so positively toward the, the brand management strategies. The second tool is all about making sure that employees understand the results company is seeking. But what this really boils down to is a continuation of the sharing the objectives with uh, different people within the organization. When you share uh, the objectives, you make them very clear in terms of the results that you're wanting. And uh, in order for uh, the results to come, you have to gain support of the people at all levels. And therefore, communication in this respect plays a very important part. Don't forget that uh, decisions about uh, the responsibilities and objectives were already taken it is only that you are communicating those to all the people within the organization at various levels for different levels of objectives to be achieved and for different results to be achieved. The role of uh, the cross-functional teams the gains importance of the all over again here. It is because of uh, their role and uh, their links with their original departments that uh, this communication becomes uh, effective and easy in order to have their people achieve the results which are to be achieved. Another tool that we have at our disposal is letting your employees know the action plan. What this uh, really means is that the employees within the company have to be guided about their actions. Everybody is the part of the action plan no matter what area he or she is working for. Tell them specifically about the changes in their routines and procedures. And any changes to that effect have got to be formalized because otherwise people are going to come up with excuses. That is for sure. You've got to educate those people about those routines and the changed procedures. Not only educate them verbally, you also have to formalize those with the help of Things like uh, the standard operating procedures and any changes to those procedures. This is uh, one of the factors that uh, was uh, talked about uh, in one of the earlier lectures. And uh, I hope that uh, you do understand the importance of uh, the standardized procedures. The objective here is to translate all the actions on the part of the employees into targets and uh, then measuring their performance against those targets. It is because of this reason that you like to share the action plan with the employees. This not only brings you their support, but this also makes sure that with the help of defining the targets, 
their performance. Let me summarize the concept of uh, the brand-based culture in the light of the lecture I have given today. There are uh, two concluding dimensions to the whole concept. The one is that uh, we have to have uh, the total, the top management support in order to make uh, the brand management strategies a success. The second concluding dimension is that uh, the all employees of the organization have got to be educated for the common goals. Unless employees are educated about the strategic intention, the strategic goals, and all the actions that they are a part of, there's no way that they are going to work for the overall strategies. And uh, there is no way that they're going to harness the, the total potential of the brand toward complete profitability and leveraging. The lecture comes to an end. Allah Hafiz, until the next one.